everyone. It's Chris and Kyle, and we're on a little field trip today. So much fun. Oh my goodness. This is Mark Anderson. He is the owner of Anderson Seed and Garden here in Logan, Utah. And Mark, how long have you had this business? So my grandmother started the store in 1942. So it wasn't my grandfather. Yeah, that's older than me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't my grandfather. It was my grandmother. She used to work at the Cash Valley Commission, which was down by pretty much where the rec center is now. Okay. And uh, when they closed up in the 40s, she bought all their equipment and decided, I'm going to go out on my own. I'm going to start my own business. In and the in the 40s? In the 40s, A yeah. woman so, started that. So this is like right in the middle of World that's War II. She started her own business. Mm -hmm. And so she brought all that equipment, leased 500 square feet here in the same location where we're at right now. So same location, 500 square feet, started her business. She was kind of like a broker for farmers. She'd go out and find things that they needed needed and would make the transactions for them. And then gradually her business got bigger and bigger and bigger. And uh, she ended up acquiring more property. And so the footprint of the store now is pretty much what grandma kind of envisioned when That's she cool. started. That's but amazing. My wife and I took over in 1999, okay. and we've built the greenhouses and added the nursery area and just just expanded everything. They so. are beautiful. Oh, oh yeah, absolutely. yeah. Especially this time of year, and it's just going to get better and better throughout the summer, right? It's so it's so much work to like bring all these plants in and keep them looking good. Oh yeah. But it's so rewarding when people come in and they're just like, "Oh, your plants look so nice." You know, <laughs> thank you, thank you for having you know all this uh -huh. beautiful stuff and these great tomatoes, and you know, it's it it's very. It's very satisfying for yeah. us. We're constantly helping people with whatever disasters they're working with, whether that's you know dead plants or you know grasshoppers, you know oh, the plague and yeah, plague and pestilence works great yeah. for here for us here at Anderson. So yeah. Oh my goodness. Okay. So, uh, what's the one thing plants need? One thing that plants there's actually there's actually five things no, that plants one. need. Just one. Just one. Love. Chris, Chris, oh, love. Yeah. <laughs> That's all you need is yeah. love. Yeah. 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 Love yeah. entails yeah. Yeah. five say, things. I say there's actually five things that yeah. plants need. Yeah. So they, they need light, they need water, they need uh, fertilizer, and they need soil to, to, okay. to perform. Okay. Like to, to, to like th to thrive, they need love as yeah. well too. So it's like that's the the key ingredient because what you input is what they give back. So every plant, Ooh. yeah, every every plant that you plant has a purpose. Yeah. All right. So every time you're planting something, there's a purpose for it. Whether it's I want fruit off of it, that's or I want flowers, I want it to be beautiful, uh -huh. or I need shade from a tree, uh -huh. or I want that shrub over here to block my neighbor's derelict cars in their backyard. <laughs> You know, you know, it's like, yeah, I mean, so there's a purpose for every single plant, but they won't always give us what we want if we don't give them what they need. Yeah. Oh, boy, I got that. That's I'm going to have to write that one down later. Yeah. So so it's how we utilize those four things, you know, how we improve their soil, how we get them the right amount of water, not too much, not too little how we feed them, and then, they, of course, they need the sun to, mm. to thrive as well, too. So so it's it's important that we give those plants what they need in the correct proportions, and then they will give us what we want. I was going to say, is it that easy? It takes a little bit of effort. Okay, thank you. Yeah, it takes it, it takes some effort. Thought. Yeah, well, yeah. That means water. But, yeah, but when you... I have to water but when you day? love But when you love something, <laughs> doesn't that take effort to, like... Oh, make yes. that relationship Some work, you know? So, Some I mean, so, so the analogy kind of works because it, it's kind of like fostering relationships with people. We're fostering relationships with our plants. This way. Yeah, yeah. So, okay, I'll be nicer to them. Be nice to your plants. Yeah. <laughs> Treat them well. Okay, that's great. All right, so we're a quilt shop, obviously. Yes. You're a, a seed and garden shop. Perfect fit. Yeah, yeah it's Absolutely. perfect fit. Yeah. So, what do the two have in common? You know, quilting, my, my mother like quilted for as long as I can remember. I, I remember growing up underneath the quilt frames. Everybody always talks about yeah. that. Yeah, like <laughs> we'd, we'd play underneath the quilt frames. And, and so my, my mom loved, absolutely loved to quilt, yeah. but she loved to garden as well too. Mm -hmm. And so there's, there's just something about bringing those pieces of the garden together and, and you know, not making a patchwork, but you know, you're you're creating a design with your flowers instead of with fabric, and exactly. so so there there are, there are some direct correlations. Whether it's vegetables, and if you come and look at my vegetable garden, yeah. it looks like a big quilt when it's all done. You I know, want to go because of, because of like all the patterns and the things that that go together. Yeah. You know, and so you know, you can do the same thing with flower beds as well too. So there's a lot of there's a lot of design elements 
in gardening and in landscaping that maybe people don't realize that kind of correlate to other artistic products and projects kind it's of true. like kind of like quilting absolutely yeah, yeah. And there's it's, a, it's like a masterpiece little. and what i what i always like to think of uh when i think of quilting or creating anything whether it's a garden or a, you know flower garden a vegetable garden anything like that quilting there's something really special about taking something that once was nothing really i mean you've got a seed mm -hmm. right, right. Mm -hmm. you might look at that seed and go yeah. okay it's a seed same with fabric. You look at a pretty piece of fabric, you go, it's fabric. But what's amazing is the process that you go undergo in, in creating something that once was nothing into something incredible. Oh, yeah. Beautiful. And all the little pieces, too. It's like mm -hmm. it's all the little pieces that come yeah. together to make a, a much prettier, bigger picture. Yeah. And that's really what we're doing with a, with a garden. Again, whether it's a flower bed or whether it's a landscape around your house yeah. or whether it's a vegetable garden, we're taking all those little pieces and bringing them together to, to make a complete whole. I love that. I yeah. love that. Are there lots of rules on what you need to plant next to each other? You I'm know, not into rules. There are... There, <laughs> When it comes to gardening, there's 10 different ways to do the same thing, oh, and most of them will all work. And so a lot of it has to do with kind of personal preference. Mm -hmm. I am not into the companion gardening like a lot of other yeah, people yeah. are. For me, I'm just like, you know, those beans really don't care if they're right next to the tomatoes. Yeah. They don't have any biases. They're not really racist nice, or anything. I like it. So it's like, well, they just go wherever they go and, and the way that I want them. But there are gardeners that really like yes. to do that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but, but for me, it's like, all the plants have different needs and different wants. And so they that's, all need love that's too. yeah, that's where you have to like figure out, you know, what their needs are and then give them what they need. Because like if you're giving your corn the same fertilizer that you're giving your tomatoes, they will not produce as well. Mm -hmm. like and, so, and so, yeah. And so you've got, you've got to like use different fertilizers for different crops or for different plants or, you know, a tree needs something completely different than, than what your marigolds need. Okay. And so, uh, we're, that's that starts little to become little that starts to become a little bit more complicated. That's what Andersons is here for. So exactly. yeah. So then people come in, they're like, ah, oh, my trees aren't doing very well. What do I need to do? And then we help them. We give them some options. It's like, okay, you could, you know, we need to fertilize or we need to go after these bugs. And here are your options. And then they get to make an educated decision. Okay, Mark, are you ready for this? I'm ready. Okay. So <laughs> we put a call out to all of you because we know so many of our audience are out there are quilters, but you also love to garden and you love to do all the things outside and especially as we think about this summer there's a lot of questions that are coming up in your mind right as to how do i do this what do i do about this issue well we've got some help for you got today, the expert friend, because we do have the expert in mark anderson and we did a call out to you to ask what were your questions we did some pretty good ones so are you ready for round i'm ready i'm ready so bring it on bring it on anderson I, let's I, do it I,